Hey up everybody, I'm moving on to the next part of my mechanical hacksaw that I'm making. In the last part I think you'll have seen where I put this mechanism on for holding the saw in the upright position automatically and then releasing it to put your cut on. Because it's got a very strong spring on this for the cutting force you've got to put some sort of damping mechanism on this side just so you can adjust the different cutting forces that you need for different materials now that's what I'm going to cover in this video but I've never, I've not seen one of them dash pot dampers before so I'm not 100% sure if what I'm doing is going to be anything like them you can perhaps buy but I did see a clip on uh, a fellow YouTuber, Chris the Bodge, he stripped his full size mechanical like saw down to uh, to clean the uh, damper out. So I did see the internals on that, albeit they were a lot bigger than I'll be making anyway, much bigger. So I did get an idea of the internals from a, a couple of shots that he did on his. So thanks for that Chris, uh, it's helped me a lot. So what I'm going to make now, uh, I've pretty much made it up out of my own head with a bit of guidance from that uh, clip that Chris did on his full sized axe So we'll crack on then and we'll have a look uh, what I'm doing with this. I don't know if you can see air around me but it's a little bit blue. I've just uh, explained, been explaining how this works. I forgot to switch camera on so I've got to start again. Oh well. I've just shown a few clips of uh, me making some of these components. I've not gone into great detail because what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, do a separate video on making one of these. Briefly, on the hexacut one, I think the dash pot is fitted into the body of the of the where the vice clamps up to to get the required stroke that you need. Well, I'm doing this completely different, really. And what I've done is it's straightforward. Well, straightforward to some, maybe not to others, I suppose. But it's pretty simple to, to, to make the components. All this is a piece of 22mm copper tubing and I've got a piece of brass. It doesn't have to be hexagonal. It just, you, you can make it out of round stock. And I've machined into the brass so this tube fits in. S silver soldered, no I haven't, I've soft soldered it in. Um, to act as a reservoir for the oil. I've drilled it, I've cross drilled it underneath, obviously you don't want to be drilling where your reservoir is, so I've drilled further down, straight through, and what that's going to do, it's going to fit onto the side of my body of my saw, and it's just going to be able to pivot as the arm goes up in an arc, I want that to pivot. Now on the hexicut one, I'm only assuming this because I've not I've never seen one. I think it's a fixed reservoir in the body of the saw 
and it, it doesn't move to follow the arc of the saw. The reason I'm saying that is because Chris the Bodge took his full size mechanical like saw to pieces to clean the reservoir out and that and I noticed on his piston the actual side, um, the diameter of the piston was spherical so I'm assuming that's how the hexacut goes about doing there imagine that ball with its top and its bottom cut off so that when the arc of the saw comes up all that's doing is rotating inside the reservoir and still giving you your, your seal I'm just using a straightforward piston uh, and onto that piston is going to run the main central shaft so that's going to screw into that then on the bottom of the piston you've got to put this plate there's all holes drilled in this piston that's to let the oil through then it's got another hole tapped at the side that's to adjust the, this, this mechanism to release or increase the resistance so that washer then goes on and covers those holes up I've got this very very light spring that goes on and then the nut captivates that spring and you screw the nut on just till it's touching the spring so that that washer has got room to flex off its seat like that when the oil comes back through as you pull in the piston back back to the top so you pull the piston up the oil is going to force that seal off the seat come through the holes and fill the reservoir back up the adjusting rod then goes into the side and this adjusting rod all it does it pushes that sealing washer off the seat regulating the damping force that the oil is going to come up through these holes variety of increments in between just a minute I've lost my train of thought right so the piston then is going to fit into this 22mm copper tubing it's not a, a, a really tight fit but it's a good fit right so as, as you pull the arm of the saw and it arcs up the piston needs to stay in the centre so all, all the tube's going to pivot on this bottom pivot point and follow that up like that. So that's where mine's up totally different to the hexi-cut one. And then this piece I've drilled into the slide bar at the top. I'll, I'll go over to the saw and show you in a minute. That fits on the top and that's what pulls the piston up and down as your arm goes up and down and that also pivots and then uh, just to stop splashes of oil coming out I've made that plus I've got this plastic cap punch two holes in and that just that's just going to fit over that just to stop any oil splashes as the piston comes back up let's put some oil in and I'll show you if you want to increase or decrease your damping force you can either put more holes in the piston or less holes or you can use a lighter or a thicker oil or both I've probably filled it up to somewhere about there right so with this adjusting rod fully, fully off the seat that means that ceiling washer's flat now against them holes you pull it up 
and it's really difficult to press. I'm having to use two hands to force that down. So when I adjust this adjuster and push that ceiling washer off its seat, I'll go I'll go to the maximum. Look, I can just push it down with two fingers now. So you've got a variety of pressures you can adjust this screw to for ver for various different cutting operations. And when when the piston comes back up you just get the occasional splash coming out so I've made this plastic cap just to fit over it. So let's move over to the saw and have a have a look at it fitted. I've, I've not actually tried it yet on the saw but you know I'm assuming it's going to work uh, if it's working like that on bench but we'll see. Are you still with me? I told you I hadn't fitted this to the saw before so I've just had to go and do a quick modification I've just had to put a groove in that to miss this adjusting uh, bar spindle whatever you want to call it and I've also put a a slot in for a screwdriver because it's a bit difficult to get to with your fingers I suppose there's nothing to stop you making this longer so you can you know have it further up but you know I didn't do it like that so right so first of all then I've drilled and tapped a hole into the slide bar for this to fit I'm not going to screw that in tight because I want it to be able to pivot so I'll go as far as it will go which is there then I'm going to back it off half a turn to there then I've drilled an hole th through the body of the saw I've tapped it M6 on this side it's clearance on this side for this pivot rod to come through I'm not going to fasten this clamp this tight because I want it to be able to move just enough to take the play out push the piston down in its down fully down position then I can thread this through so that's that's the saw in its bottom position on its stop so now I know that I can clamp that piston rod we'll see what happens So if I want to increase that pressure, uh, I screw anti-clockwise. If I want to decrease the pressure, I screw clockwise. So look at that then there. And then if I turn this clockwise um, half a turn, it'll go down quicker. And if I go down another half a turn. quicker still, another half a turn, it'll probably drop down quite fast now, yep, it's hardly damping at all, so there's only a couple of turns, you've got from uh, a heavy damp to a light damp, so that's half, that's one, one and a half, two, that's probably full pressure, full force, 